Well, Obi-Wan and Yoda talk about the beauty of the light side of the Force. Both Vader and Palpatine, as dark side Jedi, also had an influence over him. They sought him out as an apprentice, and they both taught him another relationship, one between morality and faith. It is a common premise that if a person is devout or religious, spiritual or faithful, that they are also of great moral standing. So this premise would lead us to believe that one that believes deeply in the Force and reveres it above all else would be one of the most moral people in the Star Wars films. Well, none is more reverent of the Force than Darth Vader. Vader constantly expresses his belief and admiration of the Force. However, he also holds his pity and devotion over the heads of others. He believes that his great faith <coughs> makes him superior to the less faithful, leading him to commit numerous immoral and heartless deeds. This attitude is best evidenced in the notorious scene in which Vader expresses an impassioned speech on the power of the Force, only to be heckled by the non-religious Admiral Moti. Vader responds by choking the Admiral while <laughs> proclaiming, I find your lack of faith disturbing. Vader uses similar light under the guise of religious superiority in his attempts to convert Luke. He isolates Luke from his friends and attacks Obi-Wan in order to remove their influence. He insults and condemns Obi-Wan's teachings in an attempt to confuse Luke and have him doubt his beliefs. While Vader may be Luke's primary antagonist, he nonetheless had a strong impact on Luke's spiritual growth. For while Vader's attempts were not enough to turn Luke, they were enough to tempt him into using the same methodology. For when Luke went to save his friends from the slaver Jabba the Hutt, he brazenly approached Jabba with an air of superiority, condemning the slaver's life choices and demanding that he do Luke's bidding. However, this quickly turned against Luke strengthened Jabba's resistance to him, and placed both Luke and his friends in greater danger than they would have otherwise. It was after this humbling experience that Luke was able to reflect. And what realization did the Jedi in training come to? Well, he took away the lesson that spirituality and morality are separate qualities. Having one does not grant the other. But also that using either of these qualities to hold oneself higher or to use it in aggression, even with good intentions, only serves to suppress others, not enlighten them, mm. and estrange one's cause, not advance it. But the most frightening and perhaps tempting view on religion comes from Emperor Palpatine. It is from Palpatine that Luke learns the why that you have said there isn't. Palpatine believes that religion is a tool to be used to control others. Palpatine uses the force to manipulate others and used it to promote himself to position <coughs> of power. From there, he tried to convert the Jedi to his side, and those that couldn't, didn't convert, he had purged, put to death, forcing light side Jedi like Obi-Wan and Yoda into seclusion. <coughs> and 
when Palpatine expressed his view to Luke, Luke rejected it, causing the Emperor to deliver the ultimatum, if you cannot be turned, you will be destroyed. Have we not seen this ultimatum repeatedly used in history? The Crusades, the Inquisition, even in recent politics? That one's own beliefs are absolute, and that any other belief is an evil that must be quashed. That the best way to spread one's belief is through the destruction of others. When we dismiss or suppress some of those views, are we truly following the spirit of our beliefs? The Force is a web of energy that connects all life and existence together. Does removing life from that web not diminish the power of the Force? It was during this final confrontation with Vader and Palpatine, after this final lesson, that Luke was capable of saving the day. Not through an intense duel with the lightsabers, or outwitting his opponents, or stripping them of power. It was by embodying the lessons of his mentors, by refusing to fall into aggression and arrogance, as he learned from Vader, by remaining calm and reflecting on his feelings, as you had instructed, and by accepting the good and reverence that still rested in Vader, as did Obi-Wan. By accepting that vast reverence held by Vader, the spirit and morality of that reverence were reawakened and gave the Dark Lord an understanding of the true power of his faith and a chance at redemption. In celebration of the reawakening of the power of the faith within Vader, let us sing hymn number 368. <laughs> let us sing. <laughs>